Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Well, it's good to worship you this morning. I hope the uh, wind's blown the cobwebs away and you're ready to uh, worship our God with gusto. We're going to sing our first hymn, which is number 36. Uh, we're going to uh, just leave out verse 2, so jump straight from verse 1 to verse 3. And we're going to sing, And Can It Be? <laughs>
do have a seat, and thank you for taking me at my word. What a great hymn to start with, isn't it? So, sang with gusto, so we're going to come before our Lord and uh, put aside the week, hopefully, for a moment, as we come to our prayer of preparation. And we say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. As is our tradition here, let's pause for a moment as we reflect upon our lives and come before God. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all as we confess together. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, Forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to our glory, if you're able to, would you join me in standing? And we say these words of worship together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Do have a seat. As we come to our collect, our prayer of the week, a moment of silence for you to say your own prayer of thanks. Almighty God, who alone can bring order to the unruly wills and passions of sinful humanity, 
give your people grace so to love what you command and to desire what you promise that among many among the many changes of this world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through Jesus Christ your son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen well, I'm going to invite Susie up to read us our first reading. Um, and as I do, I'm going to remind, uh, remind us all that we're working our way through Matthew's Gospel. Um, we've reached chapter 18, and uh, as we work our way through the Gospel, the preacher gets to choose the first reading, and Polly has chosen a familiar one for us this week. But I'm going to read it from the New Living Translation. So Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd... I have all that I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honour to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You honour me by anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you, Susie doesn't matter what translations it's read and we all go back to the old version don't we so uh, but that's okay because we're going to sing it now as we sing our next hymn 723 and that's going to be the lord's my shepherd
reading from chapter 18, starting at verse 10. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, that if two of you on earth agree about anything, they ask for it, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I do have a seat as I invite Polly up. Um, I'm going to be a bit naughty because I didn't warn Polly about this, but as you know, uh, Polly's in her first year of training uh, for the ministry. Can you give us a quick update how you're feeling about how it's going, Polly? It's going really well. <laughs> I'm, I'm really, really enjoying it. Uh, last weekend, I had another weekend at Cudston. Um, and uh, I think it's fair to say I didn't think the lectures were as good last weekend, but uh, being together with uh, in that community uh, is absolutely wonderful. Um, and I do laugh when I go there because we have as many services as we do meals. Um, <laughs> But it, it's really nice that the group I'm working with, we are so diverse, uh, and it's really lovely to learn from one another. And the Tuesday nights uh, in Portsmouth are a real blessing. Um, it's lovely to be there and to work with the readers. Um, I've just got my first essay back, which I passed, which is good. Um, yeah, well, you did just pass it. You passed it well, didn't I you? I did pass it. <laughs> um, and I, last night, finished uh, my essay that's due in on Wednesday. Um, really, really snappy title. Um, Historically speaking, why was Jesus crucified? Um, so that has been really interesting, and I've got another essay to start on, which has got to be due in next week. So suddenly all the deadlines are coming, uh, the work is coming thick and fast, but for me, probably the best news is I'm giving up my two-day-a-week job at Easter, so I can concentrate uh, on just being and having some rest and learning about Sabbath, as I'll come on to in a minute. <laughs> Very good. So be praying for Polly and Mike and the boys, because uh, it's not an easy time, this training period. But let's pray for her now as she speaks to us. Thank you, Lord, for the gifts that you have given Polly and for all that she's about to share with us. May you speak through her, and may we have open minds and open hearts to hear what you have to say. Amen. How many of you came along to church last week and listened to Max's sermon? Or if you weren't here, how many of you caught up with it online so you know where we've got up to uh, in the book of Matthew? See, last weekend I was at Cadston having more sessions on worship and preaching, so I couldn't join you in body, but I do love being able to catch up with the service online uh, in my own time. And so it came to be that one evening this week I was relaxing in the bath, catching up on Sunday morning sermon, because with the week I have had, that was the only place to get any peace and quiet. And I wonder how many of you responded to Max's call for you to buy John Mark Homer's book, The Elimination of Hurry. And if you have responded and you have received the book, I wonder how many of you have started reading it. 
It's interesting because I've been doing my own reading recently about Sabbath. And I've been reading a book called Sabbath by Wayne Muller and also Sabbath as Resistance by Walter Brueggemann. And yesterday, when my John Mark Homer book arrived and I read the first chapter, without being rude to John Mark Homer, it's an easy read. And it was a bit like reading a beach book after I've been reading some of the heavy tomes I've been reading for my course. So do take up the offer to get the book because it really is an easy read and so many lessons we've got to learn from it. Now, last Sunday, Max spoke about hierarchy being the root of all kinds of evil. And he pointed us to the passage from Matthew, who's the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And then the little children were brought to Jesus. And Jesus told the disciples to be like a child. And Max reminded us that at that time, children were the lowest of the low in Greco-Roman society. They were worth nothing until they could work or marry. And Jesus challenged us to be lower than a child. Max then moved on to look at our actions, making sure they don't cause others to stumble. And it's against this backdrop that we come to today's passage in Matthew 18. Matthew 18, 10 to 20. See that you don't look down on these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven will always see the face of the Father in heaven. And then as he tells us to not look down on the little children, he tells us a story tells us a parable of the lost sheep. And I'm sure it's a parable you've heard many, many times. Last week with Max telling us that children were the lowest of the low. And then we have a story about shepherds. Shepherds were often the butt of jokes. They were outcasts from society. They were probably pretty smelly because they spent day and night outside with their sheep. So when Jesus started to tell a story about the shepherds, I can imagine the people already getting ready to have a laugh. Here comes a joke. So you see, there's this shepherd who's got a hundred sheep and he loses one. So he leaves the 99 and goes off to look for the one. Was he crazy? Would the 99 be safe without him? Why not keep the 99 you've got and cherish those? And forget about the one. It's only one you've lost. You've still got 99. Wouldn't that actually perhaps be our response? Keep hold of what you've got. But actually in telling this story, Jesus is emphasising the concern that God has for every one of us. Every one counts. And so he will leave the 99 together and go and look for the one who's wandered off. And if he finds it, he's happier about the one sheep than about the 99 who didn't wander off. In the same way, your father in heaven is not willing to let any of these little ones perish. And it's when I was thinking about that passage, it really got me thinking about Psalm 23 that Susie read to us. And it made me think, you know, we often hear Psalm 23 at a funeral. And we often hear it in that context. But actually, there's so much in it for us who are living. When the Lord's my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths. The life of a shepherd in Palestine wasn't easy. The shepherds stayed with their sheep day and night, leading them in the day to good grass to eat and water to drink, defending the sheep against attack from wild beasts. And in this psalm, we've got God described as being the shepherd, looking after us, guiding us along the path, through the good times 
and the bad. Because even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. If you're going through tough times now, reach out for the hand of the Good Shepherd. Because Jesus described himself in the book of John as being the Good Shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. He is that good shepherd who will guide us through tough times. And then going back to our passage in Matthew, I'm struck again by the reaction of the shepherd. The shepherd who left the 99 and went to look for the one who was lost. Such was his care. He wasn't prepared to let a single one of his sheep go. And that's what God is like with us. Even when we mess up, when we live by our own agenda instead of his agenda, when we wander away, he seeks us out and he wants to bring us back into the fold. Such is his love for me, such is his love for you. But you know, our passage today doesn't stop there, does it? It doesn't just stop with that parable of the lost sheep. It goes on to talk about how we deal with sin in the church. You see, our God is a God who cares about interpersonal relationships. And what we find in these verses is some great advice for getting on with others and for sorting things out when things go wrong. I've got no idea what the sins are that they're talking about in this passage. But you know, I'm pretty sure we're all good at sinning and messing up. And I don't think we need to be told how to sin. I think we're good at that. But the Bible is clear about what we should do when it happens. And when somebody sins against you, it doesn't say, go round and tell everybody else what's happened. Gather people to your side and get your team ready so that you, when you go and speak to that person, you've got a good crowd behind you. It's not what the Bible says. The Bible says to go and sort things out privately with that person who sinned against you. Only then, if it doesn't work, take two or three witnesses along with you. Two or three people you really trust not to go around gossiping and spreading. Take those two or three with you. And only then, if that doesn't work, does it become a public affair. I wonder how many issues in our own lives would be more easily resolved if we followed this simple pattern. And as we leave today's passage, we're left with a promise. In verse 19, again I tell you, if two of you on earth agree about anything you ask for, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there I am with you. We're more than two or three gathered here today. So we have the promise that God is here with us. Our God, the Good Shepherd, as promised he's with us. The shepherd who would leave the 99 to go and find the one who's wandering. Such is his love for us. The good shepherd who ultimately was prepared to lay down his life for his sheep is with us today as we're gathered. Let us pray. Jesus, thank you that you are the good shepherd who was prepared to lay his life down for his sheep. Thank you that you are our shepherd and therefore we lack nothing. Thank you that even though we may go through times of trouble, even though we may walk through the darkest valleys, we can fear no evil because you are there with us to comfort us. 
as we go out into the world this week. Help us to go with your attitude. Help us to be fruitful in our relationships and to quickly and privately resolve any issues we have with others. Thank you that when we gather in your name, you are here with us. Amen. Thank you, Polly, for navigating through that with us. Sometimes, isn't it, when you, when you hear a sermon, there's, there's one point that you go away with, isn't there? Or often I will just leave one point in a sermon, but there was so much in there. I'm sure we all picked up different things to be thinking about during the week. So thank you, Polly. We come to our creed in our service. So if you're able to, would you join me in standing as we declare our faith together? And we say together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Do have a seat as uh, Sandra brings us our prayers. No, Max brings us our prayers. No, <laughs> Linda's brings us our prayers. <laughs> you would hope that the rector might know what was going on, might you? But apparently he doesn't today. So thank you, Linda. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful to know Jesus? Aren't we blessed? Thank you for that word. Um, thank you for that word, Polly. Let's come to the Lord in prayer, shall we? Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling us to meet together this morning and for the measure of health and strength you have blessed us with. May the light of your love and grace be reflected in our worship, our lives, and as we seek to reach out to others and serve you in our parish of Bedhampton. Dear Lord, we pray today for those who are struggling with ill health at this time, whether it be physical or mental, we bring them before you. May they know the peace of your presence and the touch of your healing hand upon them. We pray especially for those on our weekly sheet and for dear ones um, from our parish who are in hospital just now. Lord, we bring before you Peter, Bonnie, Pam Morgan, Elaine Newman, Janice Stott, Amelia and Michelle. And Lord, we continue to remember all who have recently been bereaved. Please help and sustain them at this time, at this difficult time. And especially we bring before you the family of David Hale. And Lord, in a quiet moment, we bring before you family and friends on our own hearts. Dear Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now, Lord, for those countries where there is fear of war. Especially we pray for the people of Russia and Ukraine. For the leaders and the military, oh Lord, soften their hearts so that war will be averted. Please bring peace and security to those who live in fear of conflict and deliver them to freedom from panic and war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dearest Lord, throughout our land there is concern over those in leadership in our country just now. For those in government, we ask for your intervention that truth and integrity will prevail. We ask that men and women will stand strong in your name and lead our land in such a way that brings honour to you 
and to steer us in ways that are right and just. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, dear Father, may we encourage one another to press on in our walk and witness for you. We pray that we may continue to stand alongside and build one another up in our faith. Most of all, we thank you for your word and your presence with us that restores and strengthens us one day at a time. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Linda. Well, as we're not allowed to shake hands or hug, you can remain seated as we share the peace together. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes a peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be with you. You can give each other that nod now. <laughs> and we're going to sing uh, our hymn, 491, which is Love Divine. So it's 491, Love Divine or Love Excel. <laughs>
do have a seat. I, I do wish sometimes you could experience what I experience up here. S standing here praying before the table to hear your worship was just incredible. And as I prayed, I just had one of those Holy Spirit nudges that we get sometimes. And just the feeling of God's pleasure upon you um, and also God's Spirit with us, weaving himself among you. So we truly are, when we gather, we truly are with God, aren't we? Let's take a moment to, as we come to the table, to acknowledge this. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, for whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son. Born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Turn into page 17. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. And so my friends, draw near with faith and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith, with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table, but you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him, and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. The blood of Christ, shed for all God's people, I receive on behalf of all God's people. Amen. Merciful Father, who gave Jesus Christ to be for us the bread of life, that those who come to him should never hunger, draw us to the Lord in faith and love, that we may eat and drink with him at his table in the kingdom, where he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. And we say our prayer of thanks together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, it's been a delight to share with you this morning. Just a few family notices before we sing our last hymn together. Do stay for tea and coffee. I'm, I'm not running away today, so I can stay for tea and coffee, so uh, that'd be great. Um, You'll notice on the sheet that the big Bedhampton quiz is coming up soon. That's going to be a bit of fun together, while also at the same time uh, raising a little money for the refurbishment fund. Uh, so gather your teams of up to six together, and we'll uh, gather, is it, I think it's the 26th of March, isn't it? It's on the sheet anyway. So, uh. And then um, Nuppets. Nuppets, yeah, exactly. What's that? <laughs> Nuppets is St. Nick's Puppets. Um, uh, have, you ever see, have you ever seen the Muppet Star Puppets? Well, Susie is going to run a little course for anyone that wants to learn how to use those. Um, right from the age of 7 to 99, I think I put on the, on the sheet. Um, and then hopefully we'll be able to use those uh, going forward in the things like messy church and the schools and, what, and whatever. So if you know anyone who wants to learn about that, we were there seven years old and 99, either get in touch with the office or grab Susie and let her know. Um, and also to say that um, um, Linda prayed for David, uh, David Howe's friends and family, our dear friend David. Uh, his funeral will be on the 25th of February here at 2.15, where we will remember David as a family here, and then David and I will go off to the crematorium on our own. But we can so put that in your diary if that's something you want to be at. And just an early warning that on Easter Saturday will be, there'll be a family service and egg hunt here on Easter Saturday, but that's hopefully a little way away at the moment, isn't it? So, uh, so let's grab our hymn books then and turn to 340. I will sing the wondrous story. Let's sing this one together.
and may the God, the Son, who comes to us as Redeemer and Judge, reveal to you the path from darkness to light, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.